Hello and welcome Asishim in Hanga. Today talking again about the Ender 3 version 3 KE and with their firmware 11012 they fixed one major issue the weird first bad level total ignorance of the bad mesh whatever it works great now so that's one content of this video we now have a clipper version with moonraker which is able to use mainsail or fluid those two quite popular web GUIs that show a lot of more future features. You can use your slicer to LAN print directly. Slice, print, upload and print and that's so convenient. And if my printer has Wi-Fi, why not use it? And then as a little side quest, we can also enable Octo Everywhere, which is just a, an add-on that you have to type into your Linux shell there. Don't be afraid, I'll show you. And this got me some even more exciting features like cloud remote access very easily set up telegram notifications of how my prints are doing even some ai features on their cloud service oh yeah and the webcam support on the clipper version that Creality released somehow is a little bit broken so i could set up the webcam i see it in the preview but then i cannot enable it i know there's some guy out there that knows a fix but it's not so easy so but the funny thing is on the octo everywhere i see the webcam <laughs> so it's enabled and it's live but it's just not uh, on the web gui what do you need to do to massively improve the ender 3 if you already have it do the firmware update which is easy to be done over the air go into the root access check mark a disclaimer wait for 30 seconds and enable root access then you know the username and password you log in with something like a command shell and you just copy two or three commands in there and you're all set up so it's not too hard in case you are not familiar with how to get putty to work to connect to your printer i already showed it in the previous video and i will briefly show it here if it's too fast you yeah, just ask some questions in the comments there's one thing that can go wrong and it went wrong for me so you can learn from my mistakes when downloading the install script I accidentally saved an HTML file and not the script itself. And if you then want to run it on the Linux shell, it yeah, gives you weird error messages. So make sure to go into the main sale shell file app, but you will see it in detail chapter about Linux. 1.1.0.12 is available. It's around 100 megs of a download. And this way it's even more convenient than over the USB stick. It didn't take long, maybe one minute. Now it already reboots. Now under the settings option, I see I have 1012. You see root account information. You have to accept this disclaimer and wait for 30 seconds. Okay, the wait is over. Okay, the account name is root and the password is Creality2023. Root is now in yellow there. That means root access is granted. Now I can continue on the PC. IP address. You can see this in the settings menu. Mine is 89. And here we use root and the password is Creality2023. So you copy those two on the USB stick. From the USB stick you copy it over to user data and there you just run this script with install or uninstall. Copy these and right click makes a paste. So it copies from temp USB stick main sale everything to user data and now let's just copy the second line and hit enter to run the script yeah that's the way it should work so make sure to download this main sale .sh the correct way if you get the same unexpected new line than i did here in my case it was just i copied the files incorrect if you right click save target yeah, it will give you a HTML file. Do you rather need to click on this and then here download raw file? So it extracted the Moonraker files and now it's starting. Maybe this was it already. Yeah, <laughs> that was it already. Well, it was simple this time. And we have way more control over the UI now and we also can use Orca to access the printer itself. You need to access this connection tab here and insert the IP.
4409 and hostname and user interface and test. Yeah, Octoprint works correctly. That's what we want. Yeah, slice something, print. And now I can say upload or upload and print. Use the device tab to see the web page as well. And it arrived here, cube PLA, which I can also delete again because it was just a test. Like so. Print preheat. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a lot more options now for free. Here a quick guide on the side quest on how to get Octo Everywhere to run. I didn't record it live, sorry. If you haven't, you need to go to the web page and create an Octo Everywhere account, which is free uh, with some basic functions that are totally fine. And once you have such an account, you can activate the Octo Everywhere service on your printer. You just once again need to be in the shell as, as previously for main sale. And then you use the yellow line, the CD user data to go there and then just copy and paste the orange line. It will be in my video description, of course. Copy and paste the orange line to download the Octoprint everywhere. And then the red line is where you actually hit install. The script runs in a colorful way and it asks you a few easy questions. It's interactive. And in the end, you are asked to go to this web page and enter this code. But please use your code and not mine. That's a, it's a generated code, of course. And I'm quite confident if these lines stick well to the bed without any user interference, the normal prints should work nice. And this is without my additional set offset in the slicer settings that I did last video. This is just with his stock measurements. Not squished, not scraping on the bed like with my additional set offset. I think it's really now to be trusted. What a nice surprise. I thought about adding additional washes down there to have some kind of bed leveling, but yeah, we shouldn't have to do this. Might be too early to be totally optimistic, but quite promising. Let's hope it is. The whole sheet is this way. Then they now really learned how to use the bed mesh for the print, which previous firmware just didn't. That's my assumption. <laughs> Look at this. I'm, I'm almost fed up now that this is so easy now. <laughs> they just got their shit together. Really nice. Let's get this off the printer. This is somewhat of a perfect first layer, in my opinion. I couldn't get it to split, yeah, if you force it, but that's good. It's also not squished, so that's how it should look like. You see, at the beginning they were really awful. Even though they did the set offset calibration and the bed mesh, the bed mesh was used incorrectly. I don't say it was completely ignored. Maybe there was some plus and minus mixed or something like this. So the only thing that I could do in the previous firmware was additional set offset to go really close to the plate but then you have these regions where you get a lot of ripples this is the better one that i got with my fix but it's still yeah this thing is the the set offset probe so just this ear here registers some force pressed from above but this is where they they acknowledge their set offset not in the whole bed those little plastic standoffs here are the only way how you could modify the 3D positioning of your bed, but you don't have to. I mounted this little Yi home camera here, adjusted the focus. You can open up these cams and, and refocus them to get, to get it to focus closely. My conclusion about this printer changed now a bit. It's still a bed slinger and I still had like one print failing where I printed a lot of these plates here. They warped a bit. Bad adhesion wasn't good, but this was also with the old firmware. Their stock settings of the heated bed to be at 35 degree for PLA, I don't like it. I'd like it to go up to 50 or even 60 degree. Also reduced the acceleration values a bit. So I wanted to dial it down a bit. It doesn't need to be super fast to be certain that my prints will not fail in the midst of the print. For the money and if you don't need an enclosed printer, still think it's a really, really good 
good one. And one of you guys in the comments of the last video compared this to the Bamboo Labs A1. He has both of them and said, yeah, one time this is better, one time the other is better. Bamboo Lab has the option for the AMS light, which quality doesn't have yet, but for 300 bucks, not a lot can go wrong. Okay, so that's it already for this video today. Credity, that's how you should do it. The firmware update is great. Printer works way better now. If you are shopping for a new 3D printer, take a closer look at this Ender 3. And if you really want to buy it, go ahead and check out my affiliate link down below. It will help the channel if you buy it over this. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you liked this quick little video this update video. Uh, please also check out my Creality K1 review that I did a few months ago and the update video which is quite similar than the Ender video. This even makes me sad a little bit. Flash Forge doesn't get nearly as much attention as Creality because their name is not so popular even though they are on the market since 2012 or something like this. So this is my best printer in the house. Okay, this is 600 and this is 400, so it's a bit more expensive, but that's almost a Bamboo Labs printer. So it's very... Just check out my review. My review didn't get a lot of attention because, yeah, it seems that people don't know these Flash Forges too well. Check out Flash Forge as well. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.